Thank you very much for being here today at our agenda meeting and to put together this agenda for June 4 at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Invocation, uh, Commissioner Payne. Pledge of Allegiance, Commissioner Dottery. Hmm. Okay. Approval of minutes. That'll be an action item, of course. Discussion and adjustment of agenda. Is there any additions to the agenda uh, or adjustments to this agenda today? That's on your desk, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Um, before uh, Ms. Holt uh, left, there are two budget amendments, number 440, number 453, and you should have those in front of you. You should have copies of those. We need to add those, and, I, and I'll go over them during the budget amendments. But we do need to add those. These the only two items? I believe so. Is there anything else to watch? <coughs> yeah, the only thing we do need is on, on all, I'd send an email early because of some scheduling conflicts. Unless anybody has an objection, we're really hoping to move the budget work session from Tuesday to Monday if we could do that. So we would need to take official action on that. Um, sometime today, I was thinking maybe after the um, after I go over the budget message, um, maybe under number six or something to change that schedule possibly. Sure. Just to reschedule for Monday at 8 a.m. Okay. I think we do have a closed session um, today, but we've got that down. And okay. We'll try and do that at the briefing if we can. All right. Then uh, unfinished business, design build overview presentation. Who is here to do that today? Noel Woods from Finance. We'll be taking care of that today. Okay. And she is prepared. Schedule meeting to consider adoption of 1314 County of Wayne budget. Schedule meeting to consider adoption. We had uh, tentatively scheduled the last Tuesday of the month. What date is that? This is uh, what, June 25th, 25th mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. Okay. Any other unfinished business that the commissioners wish to suggest or put on the agenda? Commissioners have anything? New business, Wayne County Veterans and Patriots Coalition presentation. Who is to do that? Who is to make that presentation? That is Bill Graham and Al Green are supposed to be here to make that presentation to the board. And there may be some others. You may want to write, they may have some other guests. And from right. the Wayne County Veterans and Patriots Coalition. That's the okay. president and secretary of that coalition. Budget amendments, and you've added the two, 440. And 453. 453, yes. yes. Sir. And I'll be, with Ms. Holt not being here, I'll be reviewing all the budget amendments today. Wayne County ABC Board, 1314 Budget and Travel Policy. Yes, sir. Um, we have Mike Myrick, and I'm not sure if any of his board members are coming today, but. Uh, Mike, uh, we'll be here to go over this with you. Downtown uh, Goldsboro Development Corporation request for use courthouse grounds on September 20th mm -hmm. for an annual dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they, they have that here. I mean, it, it's a, a nice event, but they always uh, ask permission, and uh, that is for September 20th. It's in the evening, and, um, you know, we just kind of spruce up things in the front, and they do the dinner here, and we just get permission to do that. So I'll just be giving that. And it's okay. literally just getting permission. County manager's recommendation. Um, so you just pass that out? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. I'll go over that at that time. Did you give one to Mr. Have you given one to uh, the media? I did. Okay. Yes, sir. Presentation of county manager's report, uh, budget the change, the work session that Monday from Tuesday. Yes. Any other items under new business that the commissioners wish to, to add? Under new business. 
Public comment section here is um, at six o'clock. Board of Commissioners comments. We'll have a closed session. I, since we have 50 minutes between now and four o'clock, I uh, would like to have that closed session now if there's no objection. Okay. And that's, that's all I have. Be, it would be to discuss matters uh, with uh, me that require attorney client privilege. Okay. We have a motion that we go into closed session. So I move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayo. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today at our county commissioners meeting. And we would like to start off by uh, asking you to please turn off your cells, or if not, certainly put them on vibrate. We would appreciate that. Thank our media for uh, covering it today and, uh, and the radio. And uh, when we get started, we'll have uh, Commissioner Pate uh, to give us our invocation. Commissioner Pate. Okay. Let's bow our heads. Out of all creation, we come before you today to give you honor and praise. You are worthy of praise. You are the source of all that is good. You are the source of all our blessings. Thank you for every gift that we've been given. We thank you for the opportunity to come and gather together this day. We ask we will hand a blessing on this meeting. We ask that you would guide and direct the meeting so that it's full of wisdom, productivity, and respect for one another. Thank you for helping us accomplish our work and our goals on this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Commissioner Daughtery, Pledge of Allegiance. Join me in facing the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Daughtery. General statutes mandates that the chairman inquires to whether any member knows of any known conflict of interest or appearance of conflict with respect to matters before this commission. If any member knows of a conflict of interest or appearance of conflict, please so state at this time. Thank you. Approval of the minutes, May 21st, 2013. Is there a motion that we approve the minutes? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion's made. Thank you, Mr. Mayo. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All those opposed, thank you. That's unanimous. Discussion adjustment of agenda. We have one item uh, that was brought up in closed session. We'll go ahead and put that as unfinished business. And that would be number three, communications radio system contract. That's number three in unfinished business. Reports, Mr. Mayo, uh, appointment committee. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, if you would, uh, in your <coughs> agenda, if you would turn, actually we're toward the front today for change. Uh, about the third page from the front. Uh, before, we, before we do this, I wanted to say that the appointment committee has been working hard since January to try to keep these committees filled and we have reached a point that uh, we're able to see daylight at the end of the tunnel but there are a lot of positions that are coming up on these 39 committees that we have in our county that volunteers are dire we're, we really need for, for people to, in Wayne County to citizens to come forward and volunteer for these positions uh, uh, these committees are very important to our county uh, and it lets, lets people or the citizens know what's going on. Our first, uh, first uh, item today is the Goldsboro Wayne Transportation Authority. Uh, the, this will be a reappointment of uh, Bruce Gates and Pamela Holt and John M. Bell. Uh, they are eligible for reappointment and I make that in the form of a motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayo. Motion's been made to reappoint Bruce Gates, Pamela Holt, and John Bell to the Goldsboro Wayne Transportation Authority. 
any discussion? And this, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Daughtery. Uh, and this is Gateway, is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussions? All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. All those opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. If you would turn the page, please. <clears throat> the uh, Eastern Carolina Workforce Development Board. Uh, the committee is recommended the reappointment of Fletcher uh, Bizzle uh, for reappointment of that board, and I make that in the form of a motion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motions before to reappoint to the Eastern Carolina Workforce Development Board, Mr. Fletcher Bizzle. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. And all those opposed, that's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, the Wayne County uh, Jury Commission. Uh, the, we would like to uh, recommend from the board that uh, Barbara Acock be appointed uh, to that board, and I make that in a form of a motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion's on the floor to appoint Barbara Acock to the Wayne County Jury Commission. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you, that's unanimous. And that's all we have today, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Board of Commissioners Committee Reports. Mr. Cromarty. <coughs> well, I uh, had an opportunity to go to Raleigh now, the day after our last uh, board meeting and that was a very interesting trip and uh, an interesting day. We had the opportunity to um, see our Raleigh representatives in action and as a matter of fact we had two of them to speak to the uh, county commissioner group. I was impressed by the language uh, eloquent, uh, cordial with us, and then we got back down to observe them in the uh, in action in the Senate chambers, and it grew rather testy, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. There were and I say that in some jest, but there were things discussed that are philosophical differences between the two sides of the house, if you will. And uh, the party that I'm a member of remained in support of the average person so that they could maintain the standard of living and progress as they always have. And I heard other folk take a different approach, which caused me some dismay after such conciliatory language when we heard them speak to us as it relates to the budget, as it relates to how finance is going to be done, how it relates to uh, how the average person in North Carolina will, be, uh, will, will carry out their day. But it was really nice when we met with them and they were discussing it and making a presentation. I was really impressed by what they said would happen. But when they got back down there debating with each other, it became a different story. And that's what saddened me, that it does not seem like that there's an opportunity to have uh, dialogue on, both, on, each, on each side of the aisle that would be the best for the average citizen in North Carolina. So the day was mixed, but it was enlightening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kamari. Mr. Bell? I only attended two uh, meetings, East Region and uh, East Point. But there's nothing to report. It was just a routine meeting, nothing unusual happened. So uh, I'll pass to Mr. Daugherty. Mr. Daugherty. <laughs> I, uh, I also had no meetings over the last two weeks. I, <laughs> I, uh, 
I must say I played hooky. I went fishing, <laughs> and I enjoyed it, the deep sea fishing and our great coast of North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Pete. Mr. Darty failed to say the number of fish he caught I got to see that I was invited and couldn't go. But, uh, thank you for inviting me anyway. I did have one very important meeting. We met with the uh, uh, Wayne County Veterans Advisor Group for our first meeting and um, got a couple of the folks out here that were there at the meeting and I appreciated them coming. That was on May 30th. We um, elected officers and we set the term ending, staggered the term so everybody wouldn't go on and off at the same time. The chairman that was uh, selected was Victor Miller. Vice chair was Carl Gruber, Secretary Don Peters. And uh, some of the discussion points that took place was the uh, about outreach and visibility and trying to, to locate the veterans that are in Wayne County and try to reach out to those people to try to determine what their um, issues are and what we can do as a county to support them because that's not been happening in the past. It's been individual veterans groups and individuals that have been doing that. But the county needs to take a more active role in that. And that's what the what this group is all about. Um, we've asked Connie Price to and planning to put together some district maps for because everybody wanted to know which, what district they were in and, and the veterans they were representing. And Connie sent me a text today and said those maps are ready. So I'll try to pick those up tomorrow. Um, there was some talk about what the actual definition of a veteran is. And you think that would be an easy thing to determine. It's really not. And I went on the, the Department of um, Defense's website today and I looked at um, the various websites and you keep finding a little bit different um, definitions but we're going to nail that down and get that right because we want to make sure that every veteran that's out there receives services. The original um, resolution that I read said a quarterly meeting but we talked about that in our meeting and felt like that probably wasn't enough. We needed a little bit more traction and we want to change that and we're going to do that probably going to move to a bi-monthly meeting at the very minimum. Um, we talked about discussion of, of the quorum and problems they've had in other counties and I talked to some of the vets that were there and they said sometimes they have quorum issues too so we may be looking to go out and get some at large um, members to help bring this in and then I'll also reach out to other veteran groups so we can bring it all into one place. And so and one other thing they wanted an official letterhead I guess we could take care of that so when we send out official letters it will say the Wayne County um, Advisor, Veterans Advisory Group and I'm sure we could probably work that out. But I was very honored to, to sit with this gentleman. We've got some strong people around the table, uh, a lot of good ideas, and people with a lot of experience that know how to reach out to help vets, and that's what we're going to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Pate. Mr. Mayo? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess the the highlight of the day is, is, is seeing your grandbaby <laughs> come and visit you. <laughs> At that, uh, Committee reports, um, I've got a, a couple things I want to mention. Number one is that I was uh, in attendance uh, at the first uh, Veterans Advisory Board Committee meeting, and I'd like to say that it was a great meeting. Uh, Commissioner Pate uh, did a great job in handling that uh, meeting. The, the Veterans uh, Committee itself, uh, very engaged. There was a lot of dialogue. A lot of conversation and that's what we need in order to move forward the the facilities committee of course has been <coughs> very busy um, trying to get uh, cost and so forth and nailed down for the budget and, and what repair costs are going to be for the next physical year and so uh, the facilities committee is very active uh, in Wayne County we've got a lot going on Going back to our appointment committee that uh, we just uh, had some appointments and, and reappointments, I again want to encourage the citizens of Wayne County to get involved in our 39 committees uh, by f going to WayneGov.com and if you go to WayneGov.com and look, click on citizen participation then you'll see uh, boards and commissions pop up and click on that and your application will come right up. You can fill it out and when you hit done or send, it comes right straight to Ms. Marshall Wilson. And, and so we really need, if you see your friends in your neighborhood, you can also go online now since the new, uh, since we've added all 39 or 40 of these committees are listed on the website 
and the description of what they do and who's serving. You may find someone that's serving on a committee that's one of your friends that you'd like to serve with. So I encourage you to, to, to go to the website and get involved uh, in what's going on in our county. Uh, Commissioner Camardi uh, 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 actually covered everything that we did on Assembly Day at the uh, Assembly Day put on by the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. The other thing that uh, I was able to attend was uh, the Base Community Council, which was uh, was held at um, Goldsboro Country Club, and uh, the base is a big part of Wayne County and one of the things, a lot of the things that we discussed is uh, people from the base were there um, and, and, and we talked about uh, how the sequester is, is affecting the base. Um, you know, what are we going to do? What are we going to do when BRAC comes up? We need to start preparing and already are preparing for BRAC coming up. So, and how to protect the base, how to protect the base as far as the flight path and these kind of issues. So there was a lot of dialogue, there's a lot of discussion, and, and that was a great meeting. I guess the, the, the most heartfelt um, meeting that I went to, or honor meeting, was the Memorial Day services at Wayne Community College, uh, which our veterans uh, were honored that day, they have given, all for our country and I've said this before from this uh, from this board seat and I'm gonna say it again is that you can you can hear from a teacher in school or you can read it in a book as to what these veterans have sacrificed for our freedom but until you walk out and actually talk to a veteran you really don't know if you talk to a veteran what they have sacrificed for our freedom, for our very reason to be here today, uh, you're going to walk away with a soft heart. So uh, we we had a we had a great honor meeting out there, and uh, that was that was one of the highlights of the week. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Chair, yes, sir, Mr. Cromarty. If I could just attack on a little bit with Mr. Mayo. Yes, sir. Uh, I was out there with, at that particular one also, but I would like to give a shout out to Mount Olive. Uh, we had a real nice veteran ceremony down at Maple Street Cemetery, and uh, a young man gave a short presentation, and I can't begin to tell you what he said, but it was as powerful, very short but powerful as anything I've ever heard. and. Uh, I, I think it's just a combination of the middle of the afternoon. It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We probably had already been, everybody been to church. and You know, you had a chance to close out the afternoon, well, that part of the afternoon anyway, with that at Maple Street Park and uh, uh, Maple Street Cemetery in Mount Olive. And it was very moving. And I agree with you, Mr. Mayo. It's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a special moment when you're among people who have sacrificed a lot or they have family members who have sacrificed a lot so keep up the door uh, thank you sir thank you mr Kamardi. uh i do long for those days where i could get back on the water uh, and go fishing and go sailing and moving boats but those days i'm afraid are long gone but um the to avoid redundancy the Eastern Carolina Council of Governments, you know I serve as president, and June, this, uh, in fact, next week will be my last meeting. Um, I've served as its president for the last two and a half years, and uh, the election process will take, and I will not, um, I, I am not in a position to be president any longer, so that will take place, and of course you all know that the Eastern Carolina Council of Governments is a nine-county quasi-government um, representing our region and mainly in um, adult care and of course the RPO and the um, technical services that we get through grants and, and all that are helping um, projects that we've seen certainly through Goldsboro and into Mount Olive. 
that I'll still represent you, but not as its president. The um, Department of Health and Human Services, you know, also serve, as you know, on the steering committee for the association. So Se Secretary Voss, of course, under the direction of uh, our, our governor. A lot of, lot of changes going on in DHHS. NCFAST has taken hold and, and doing, I, th I think, a great job. There's a lot of uh, little cobwebs, as, um, as Commissioner Pate had mentioned in our last meeting w through DSS, but certainly um, a way of the future and that they will stay fast on, on NCFAST. Uh, also, uh, working through the uh, 1915 waiver, they're looking at a, a new mental health uh, 1115 waiver now that uh, Pat McCroy has suggested through HHS and uh, be looking for that to also change in the mental health arena. Uh, the transportation, I've had several meetings uh, on the 70 corridor commission uh, within uh, Derwood Stevenson, the director, and we have, of course, in our last meeting, you know that Cambridge is now under contract to do a comprehensive land use, I'm sorry, a uh, economic uh, impact analysis, something, as you all again know, that <coughs> I've been hammering out for about three years on transportation is to have economic impact analysis done on these uh, freeways and interstates and roadways throughout Wayne County and in the region. Um, you have a, in these studies, uh, just to give you a quick review on the studies, is that you have an environmental study, a feasibility study, and an economic impact study. This particular study is an economic impact study uh, looking at the, the dollars uh, that are represented on the highway system. So Highway 70, uh, NCDOT, has granted uh, <coughs> up to $250,000 to uh, acquire Cambridge to do this study. That's going to take about six months in each county and each city in the counties of five counties from Johnston, Wayne, Craven, Carteret, and um, Lenore will be at the table. And the study will take about six months to see uh, the economic impact on 70. But with that too, uh, the 795 uh, 40 connector that you've heard uh, the Transportation Committee speak of uh, in the last three months is um, taking hold to also have an economic impact study done on that. That's going to hopefully couple and we'll have an addendum to that contract and we're working on that as we speak. The, uh, as you know, I serve on the economic, I'm sorry, on the Environmental Management Commission for the state. Uh, the, um, there's a bill in the House that's going to reconstruct or, or redo um, a lot of, I uh, can't remember what the bill is right off, but there'll be some restructuring on um, committees, commissions, departments in the state, and we, as the governor has suggested through the House and Senate, once uh, we, July gets here, we will see a lot of commissions that will be merged, and the Environmental Management Commission certainly, as you know, is in charge of DWQ and, in, and uh, Diener, um, probably see some changes on that. So uh, I attended its last meeting with the 19 members uh, a couple of weeks ago. That probably will be the last meeting of, of, of that group until the, the uh, new group is put together. County Assembly Day uh, that some of you have spoke about uh, of, of seeing the General Assembly in action on the floor. I'm certainly glad that we could all go, had a great representation. The uh, premier part of that for me was hearing uh, Senator Rucho and uh, the, the tax reform that you've been hearing uh, and reading about and hearing about on TV and radio uh, for the last two weeks. Uh, Senator Rucho and Bill Rabin, Senator down in um, Brunswick, Brunswick County, I don't see New, New Hanover or, or Brunswick County, they're co-sponsors of the particular bill for tax reform. Um, you're, you're seeing a, a, a lot of that now, but what was so good about being a part of the County Assembly Day that this tax reform and hearing uh, House Member Speaker Tom Tillis speak on regulatory reform. You, we are there to hear all 100 counties. It is so important that this association who advocates, the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners who advocates for its counties at the General Assembly. So as you have heard commissioners say that you can get on the floor and get down there and hear where those guys go at it back and forth, 
but you do know that the association that we have in Raleigh, we are part of that. And we, when we go to these, we pick up so much information that can be an asset and benefit this county. And we bring that knowledge back to this board and bring it to you to keep you at the table. And to, uh, to, to finish up, um, Crime Watch uh, went in in Springs. Uh, I did clear it with the commissioners in those districts before I went. didn't want to step on you guys, you know, going into your districts. But I was invited uh, to go to Indian Springs and did a crime watch and always enjoy going there. they got a group of, of citizens there are very concerned about crime and, and, and doing better for their community. And, and for them to invite me each, each quarter or every six months to go since 08 has been, is, is been a pleasure. That is uh, my reports and um, <coughs> just a few of them. There are many more, but we don't have time to, to go into to all of that. But it's um, been, certainly been busy, all of us have. Thank you for your reports. Now we'll move on to um, the unfinished business. We have number one, design, build, overview, presentation, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. I invite Noel Woods, if she'd come forward. She's going to, you know, since we're moving towards the, in, in the very near future on the Mount Olive uh, Library Project, thought it would be uh, a good idea and the board had talked about just getting a, a general overview and kind of an education process about what design build is and how that process works so this is kind of a first step in moving in that direction well, thank you miss welcome miss woods good afternoon good afternoon basically i'm just going to kind of go through like you said and give you an overview of what design build is and what our next steps will be on may 26th 2011, the North Carolina General Assembly passed House Bill 284, allowing Wayne and Currituck counties to use the design build method of, for construction and renovation for county buildings. Now, that law will expire December 31st, 2014. But the good thing is that there's a House Bill 857, which allows all counties to utilize the design build method of construction that's in legislation right now. And I've talked to the School of Government, and they feel very strongly that it will pass. They're just not sure when, so we're on hold for that. The definition for design build is, is a method of construction in which the design build team, which is an architect and the general contractor, works under one contract with the project owner, being the county, to provide both design and construction <coughs> services. There are certain procedures that we have to follow. The county's legislation authorizes design build and imposes certain procedural requirements in selecting a design build team. The county shall seek to pre-qualify and solicit at least three design build teams to bid on the project. The county shall receive at least three sealed proposals from those teams for the project. If three proposals are not received and the project has been publicly advertised for a minimum of 30 days, the county may proceed with the pro proposals received. If we choose not to advertise for 30 consecutive days, then we will just have to re-advertise the project. The county shall interview at least two of the design build teams that submit proposals. The county shall award the contract to the best qualified team. Now the next steps for the county. The request for qualifications, or RFQ if you will, will be completed and approved by our facilities committee. The RFQ packets will be mailed and electronically sent to potential design build teams. The RFQ will be posted on our website and it will be publicly advertised. Once the design build teams submit their qualifications, the facilities committee will choose a short list and, and interview them. The facilities committee will choose the design build team and request approval from the board of commissioners. Upon approval and award of the contract, the project will begin. I have been in, co in contact with Ratio several times, and I've talked with them this week. We are supposed to, by, by the end of this week, receive the CAD drawings and the manuals that we need to start this process. So as soon as I receive those in hand, um, we will start writing the RFQ. 
Next is just a flow sh chart to kind of explain to you the process. Um, with design build, your HVAC, your plumbing, your electrical, your subcontractors, they all report to your design to your design build team. And then in turn, that design build team reports to the project owner, which would be Wayne County. It's kind of you have a single source that reports to Wayne County. Now my next question to you is why use design build? Well, one, reduction in cost. Design build is still new, but from my research from the School of Government and from other municipalities, <coughs> it's proven to reduce cost. Actually, we've proven it ourselves through the money we saved at the Senior Center doing design build. It also saves time, and also it's all in one. It also, everything's all in one and, and it goes hand in hand with the saving time. You have one single point of contact. Also, on the finance side, it saves on soft cost. You don't have as many purchase orders when you have one person to go to. You don't have as many invoices. Um, to, it just saves money all the way around. All right, any questions at this point? Ms. Woods. Any questions for Ms. Woods, Commissioners? Mr. Chair? Mr. Donnery. Mr. Questionnaire. <laughs> um, is it my understanding that once you get your plans <coughs> together and you submit this, uh, then the design teams here are actually going to make a recommendation based upon your plans and a, a pricing, a bid, to complete the project with with these revisions maybe? We will do a request for qualifications and in that qualifications we will state the amount that we are the, the amount that we've got budgeted for that project right. or the amount per square foot that we are looking for. Okay. Um, but as far as qualifications are concerned, they won't per se send us in a bid at the qualification point. They they can send us in um, you know, their their qualifications and they will know what our budgeted amount is. Now we can put wording in there if you would like for <coughs> us to have a bid at that point, but a lot of times when you do the bid, the bid part of it, at that point it will drive the price up, so we tend to do the qualification phase. I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and once uh, these uh, individuals submit their qualifications and you go through those and you go to the facilities committee, then the facilities committee will meet with them and discuss maybe some tweaking on the plan and so forth. That's correct. Is that correct? What, um, what, what we did with the senior center, which we will probably do here, we had eight that came back to us design build teams from the senior center. Okay. And I've had several um, companies call me already interested in this. So I feel like we'll have quite a bit of interest in this. Um, so we will take whatever we receive and the committee will sit down and we will look at all the proposals and then um, if we want to interview all of them we can if we want to make a short list depending on how many we have um, and then we will interview them and they will come in and they will actually give us a proposal they will show us a design that they you know they will take our design that we've already got and go over it with us and kind of tell us what their ideas are to value engineer to make it better and cheaper um, than what we already have. So to give an example, based upon the plans that you currently have, if a person gives a proposal, they may suggest that you move the bathrooms from this location to that location and in do so may save us money. That's correct. Am I correct? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. That's the value engineering piece. That's yeah. You also understand piece. once you, after you go through the qualification piece, as Noel said, you then have the ability, once you choose that team, though you put a, a budget or a number together, a square foot or a general number, you have the ability to negotiate with that team or that group pricing. Right. After the, the award. Bid, after you do that. Then you negotiate the not before. And uh, there's where you get your engineer back right. and save. I can see where you can save some, some money on that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions, Ms. Woods? When can, let me rephrase this, by our next meeting, um, commissioner meeting, will we be able to have something to go forward and make it sort of more concrete at that time? Um, I will 
do my best. Um, once I receive the, the drawings, I will have to get with the facilities director and we have to sit down and write the specifications out and we have to write the RFQ. Um, and once we get that written, then we have to um, we have to set a meeting for the facilities committee to come to meet together and I understand there's a 48 hour notice we have to give for that, Marsha. Mm -hmm. um, the committee will have to meet to go over the RFQ to approve it and once they approve it then I would be ready to come back to tell you we're ready to bid okay um, I guess I would like to I don't know that I could get that done in two weeks <laughs> well I would like to encourage you to um, have the facilities director with mr. Smith and if you would mr. Smith to get with then go ahead and set up a facilities committee meeting uh, I know next week we have a work session we have one Thursday we have another one Monday mm -hmm. But it would be nice to, to have a facilities committee meeting okay. to press as much forward as we can before our next meeting to move. Someone used the word ex what was expeditiously. Expeditiously. <laughs> Got to remember that word. Yeah. It's a good word to use. <laughs> so we can have something. Um, we at least can give you some updates and some better timelines at that point in time, too. Okay. okay. I'll be glad to. Thank you, Ms. Woods. Any, Thank any you other Chairman. comments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor. Yes, I, I understand uh, that we actually, we paid the $35,000 to ratio. I understand uh, that we're, we're actually waiting for them uh, to to send us confirmation that we, in fact, do own the the drawings and so forth. And, and it's, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask our county attorney, Mr. Parker, is that correct? That is correct. And based on what Ms. Woods has said, has had the conversation with them, they expect to send those things to us Friday, by Friday, okay. this Friday. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayo. Any other comments or, or suggestions? <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Woods. Thank you so much. Good report. <coughs> Thank you. Number two on unfinished business is an action item, scheduled meeting to consider adoption of the 2013-14 County of Wayne budget. <coughs> Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. We had not set an actual one, and this would be on June 25th, 2013, 9 a.m. in this room for consideration of the 1314 uh, budget. Of course, we have work sessions, um, and we'll be talking about a, a change of schedule in, later in the meeting, but we needed to go ahead and set this up as a special meeting to just get it advertised. <coughs> Recommendation then from the county manager that uh, the last Tuesday of the month, June the 25th at 9 a.m., to set that meeting as the um, the date that we will adopt the uh, to consider adoption. I'm sorry, to consider adoption of the 1314 County of Wayne budget. What's the pleasure of the board, Mr. Chairman? I so move that we set that as our date to consider adoption of our 2013-2014 County budget. Thank you, Mr. Dottery. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. That's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> the other, the third item in unfinished business is another action item. It comes from closed session. The um, communication system. This would be the radio system's contract for maintenance. Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. I defer to the county attorney. Um, and Mr. Chairman and Mr. members Moore. of the board, I recommend that uh, you authorize me to conclude negotiations with the radio communications company known as RCC to provide a service and maintenance contract for Wayne County's countywide public safety communication system when completed to also authorize the chairman to sign the contract. RCC is a carry uh, organization, a uh, North Carolina organization, and uh, Joe Gurley and his team are very much satisfied that they will do a good job with uh, the service and maintenance of our system. The recommendation from council is to pleasure the board. Mr. Aycock, I didn't know you were here. Welcome back. Welcome <laughs> back. Thank you, Mr. Aycock. I apologize for my appearance, but I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Aycock. Um, 
the motion on the floor then and pardon me if i don't commissioners would you like that reread are you okay yes for the well, motion okay any discussion all those in favor raise your hand all those opposed thank you mr aycock under new business the wayne county veterans and patriots coalition presentation mr smith i believe we've got some special guests today. we do uh we have a certificate of appreciation to the board of commissioners uh, being presented today, the Wayne County Veterans and Patriots Coalition, President Bill Graham and Secretary Al Green, and may have some other guests with them if they could introduce. Chairman Keane, uh, Board of Commissioners, we had a very great event with the Wall of the Hills being brought to Goldsboro. We were able to honor an awful lot of veterans and we have our feedback has been coming in very positive that it has touched the hearts of many veterans in Wayne County and has brought some healing to those veterans that are suffering some severely from PTSD uh, related to combat action in Vietnam. For your um, support in helping us obtain the wall to get here to Goldsboro, we would like to present to you for the County of Wayne Steve, uh, Chairman King, could you come down, please? We all will fuel. Sure. That would be great. Right. That would be great. Right. Sir, can I ask you to stay at the podium so yeah. that way TV and the radio can hear you too? Because without the mic, they won't hear you. Okay. Sorry. Right. Thank you. No okay. problem. Okay. Um, on behalf of the Wayne County Veterans and Patriots Coalition, we'd like to present to you uh, the Board of Commissioners of Wayne County for your dedicated support and contribution to bringing the Vietnam Traveling Veterans Memorial, the Wall That Heals, to Goldsboro during the period April 16, 22, 2013 the Wayne County Veterans and Patriots Coalition. Yeah. This is this is pretty much the same except it's a certificate of appreciation is presented to the County of Wayne for your dedicated support and contributions to the programs of the Wayne County Veterans and Patriots Coalition, the Traveling Vietnam uh, Veterans Memorial, the Wall That Heals, April 16th to the 22nd, 2013. Budget amendments, uh, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Um, first, Mr. Chairman, before we get started, uh, 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 Ms. Holt, since her apologies, she has a uh, rather severe illness in her family and she is traveling out of state, and our prayers and our wishes are with her family and with her mother, particularly. So um, we hope that everything and know that everything will be all right in that regard. So, anyway, and her, they're going there and coming back. But I'd like to start on page four. On literacy connections, you have number four, four or five. Uh, this is, uh, you'll see salaries and wages. 
Um, basically, uh, this $3,029, this is obligating funds for the Literacy Connection salaries and anticipate reimbursement from Literacy Connection. Uh, they receive dollars from other areas other than Wayne County, so this does not cost us. We're just basically accounting for that, and this has to do with part of their part-time work uh, that they have added folks on through some of their grants. On number four, four, five. Did you want to yes, take sir. these separately? Uh, if they uh, the are individual, one? but if they are certainly of the same uh, department, like you to group them, if you. I've tried to. Yeah, I think we. I think we've got that. But literacy connections. That would be one on its own. Let's pledge the board. Make the motion we approve, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motions on the floor that we appraise that we approve. The literacy connections number four four five in your agenda book. Any any discussion? One question. Yes, sir, Mr. Pate. One question, Mr. Smith. Just mm -hmm. so I don't have to ask this again because I saw this anticipate on several of these. This is just an accounting. It is your, basically what it is is um, you know we fund literacy connections a certain yeah. amount, but they get dollars from other entities. So this is accounting for because. Uh, the two individuals are on our payroll by contract so when they up their hours we're not responsible they have to come up with the money so they're bringing the money okay. to okay. us to pay them it doesn't cost us anything thank you mm -hmm. okay that brings up a question I have then um, since you've said that bring up a good point Commissioner Pate in reference to funds that are coming in that are not tied to costing us anything, which is not costing the taxpayers anything. These funds come in from some other area. From yeah, everything from United Way to liter there's a literacy grant. There's several grants yeah, there's that, several that grants we see, several. Yeah. And that's okay. part of those grants. So we're not seeing the sources of revenue come from <coughs> fund balance no, or okay. And I and I guess I asked that question to um, I guess bring in what we're talking about with the budget is that we're looking at a net and this would be net because this is not this is part of the gross because there is a grand it's amount a and it's a pass-through it's a pass-through okay yeah, correct and this would be considered a pass-through that's right not costing the taxpayers anything that's correct yep. so as we start looking at what it's we a discussed, revenue and an expenditure connected right okay yes got it <coughs> okay no other questions? All those in favor, say aye. Or raise your hand. So, thank you. All right. Um, next, um, Sheriff's Office. I've got several. Start on page five. The first one you'll see, uh, this is to record receipt of revenues for seized property. You've seen these before. We, uh, we just reference those as they come in. That is number 438. Number 439 is to record receipt of for revenues for controlled substance tax. Number 446, to appropriate money received from Berkeley Insurance Company. Uh, this basically was from, a, um, I think, an accident in the insurance and refunds and recoveries. So it's a revenue. Uh, number 447, to record receipts of revenues on seized property. We'd love to get a whole lot of those. That really helps us in the year. So <laughs> I'll tell them, go out and find some more. Uh, so anyway, we have starting at number 438. 439, 446, 447, and I, believe, I just want to make sure, I think those are all in that group, I believe. Yes, sir. Pleasure to board. I move that we adopt these as a group. Okay. Mr. Camardi, uh, that uh, motion's on the floor that, that we approve or adopt these as a group. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chairman, you have on page nine, number 448, and I'm attaching behind that one of the new ones today, number 453. I'll start with number 448. Uh, this is additional funds for telephone allowance uh, due increase in the number of staffing participating. Also additional security guard for the board and building not anticipated in the FY 2013 or the 12-13 you know, uh, budget and um, fund balance appropriated uh, the telephone allowance uh, basically that is reimbursing someone on phones 
um, that were not participating before, and then the security services of $9,600 or just over $9,600. And we get uh, just over 50% of that $9,600 back from state and federal grants. We're able to code that and get that some of that money back. So we will be doing that also on the, 941. the 941. I was going to say 1541. Okay. You're all right. I knew you were here for a reason. Uh, next, on number 453 on social services, these are funds needed uh, to order pending supply requests. And these are an off supplies. Uh, you'll see direct services and child support, some 401k retirement, uh, child support lab services, and this is fund balance appropriated of $5,125. So I have those two, Mr. Chairman, number 453 and number 448. The board. What's the pleasure? I may we accept four, five, three, and four, four, eight, and go ahead and adopt those. Any motions on the floor that we accept these? Any discussion? I have a question. Child support lab services. Mm -hmm. Help me with that one. I'm not familiar with that. Yeah, the board can talk because that's something he's been working on for a couple of years. When paternity is an issue and we need to have a return called DNA test. That's, that's what that is. We, the county tries, if the, if the mother and child are receiving Medicaid, we try to get Medicaid to pay for it so the county doesn't have to pay for it. The man, uh, the father who is not receiving it, we will pay for, advance it, and when he turns out to be the father, we get the judge to order him to reimburse the county. Okay. For all of it, not just his share. Okay. Generally, when somebody gets back a 99.99% .99 probability of fraternity, they don't want to fight the case anymore. Sure. That's DNA. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, any other discussions? Thank you. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay. It's unanimous. Okay, on page 10, you have number 449. This is under 911. This is some holiday pay, um, and you'll see earnings appropriated of uh, $295. And I think we've had, um, uh, because some of the holiday pay, if someone works those hours, you have to pay holiday pay. So we're trying to anticipate that. Okay. Mr. The board? I make a motion we approve it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hancock. Motion's on the floor to approve. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. <coughs> That's unanimous. Okay, starting on page 11, 12, and 13. Um, this is uh, JCPC. Um, if you recall, a meeting or two ago, we actually brought to you the grant adjustment for JCPC on the Wayne County Structured Day Program on the Connect Four and on the Connect for Juvenile Restitution. And these are to anticipate and appropriate funds for the Wayne County Structured Day Program on number 444. Um, the next um, of the $2,000 one was on Connect 4. And the next um, is to anticipate appropriate funds for Connect for Juvenile. These are um, all grant funds. This is not county money. Anticipating the grant funds. Okay. The board's pleasure. Make the motion with accept, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, motion's on the floor. Any discussion? Um, I have a question on a, because it is anticipated grant funds. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen anything in the House or the Senate that's going to affect this? No. This um, become, we actually are, they're committed to these funds, so we will receive these dollars. It's already been committed and signed, so okay. there's no reason to think we will not receive them. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Daughtery. could inquire. Uh, should we be receiving these by the end of this month? Mm -hmm. In this fiscal year? You think, yeah, before June 30. That's before why I June 30. check Jan's because she knows when those wires come in. <laughs> okay. But I don't think because they'll want to pay those out typically before that time. I understand. Period. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions or discussions on it? Yeah. Other questions? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. That's unanimous. Okay. On page 14, number 450, $500. This is a health insurance opt-out. Basically, we had an employee who opted out of the insurance program. 
and uh, not anticipated. Um, obviously, when they do that, that saves county dollars, um, and that is for five hundred dollars. That's the only one we have for the library number four five zero. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. Thank you, Mr. Donnery. Motion's on the floor that we adopt uh, this budget amendment four fifty. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Thank you. It's unanimous. Next on page 415, we have number 451, and this is uh, fund balance appropriation of $24,500. Professional services for numbers here, as uh, recently discussed, uh, number 451. I move adoption, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Dottery. Motion's on the floor that we adopt. Any this um, human resources? Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, uh, what what was this professional services for the United? When you switch from the Ceridian system to the GEM system, the, we had to get the auditors to come in and help clarify those things, and this is what this is. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Aycock. So what you're telling us is that basically this still falls back on Ceridian? Not necessarily, because some of it is, is training to try to get back in. When we got went back into the GEM system, as I understand it, we were able to get more from the GEM system in the new, as we have it now, than we had it before. We're using additional modules within GEM, so some of it's training also. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much is it of training? Huh. Yeah, we had that last time. It was like it was less than six thousand dollars of the total. So you have a difference of twenty eight twenty uh eighteen thousand dollars. What's the eighteen thousand dollars for? It is for Numbershear to work with the county to look and check out all the departments to make sure that uh, we have paid properly. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of this, uh, this $24,500 for human resources, raise your hand. All those opposed? Smith. Yes, sir. Uh, page 16. I'm sorry, I didn't skip one. No. Uh, page 16, number 452. This is the health service team. And you will see that this, this is 100% grant funded. Uh, the budget amendments needed to move monies into the lines for future expenses in the program. Uh, newsletters are mailed out monthly, and they need to purchase items uh, in this program uh, for part of the daycare issues. But this is part of a, uh, a grant. We're just anticipating that. I move we accept, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Motion's on the floor that we accept this um, amendment, mm -hmm. 452 on health service team. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. That is unanimous. Mr. Chairman, the last one was one that we added today, number 440, Central Services. This is on uh, uh, code number 450. It's insurance and bonding of $370, fund balance appropriated. And this is just in anticipation of our bond, <coughs> bonding and insurance, where we're short $370 um, once we get the invoice. Mr. Chairman, I move adoption. Thank you, Mr. Daughter. Motion's on the floor to adopt. Any, any questions? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. It's unanimous. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. <coughs> Next on the agenda is the Wayne County ABC Board 2013-14 Budget and Travel Policy. Mr. Smith, we have some special guests today. We do. We have uh, the business manager for the uh, Wayne County ABC Board, uh, Mr. Mike Meyer, and I think he's got some guests with him also. I, I do. I have my chairman with me, uh, Joe Sawyer, 
and also my law enforcement officer, um, George <laughs> Rex. <laughs> I wonder his name is. Well, <laughs> George has been around. He was 20 years in the Air Force and Security Police and 20 years at the Sheriff's Department, so most everybody knows him here in Goldberg. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> before I get started on my budget, I'd like to commend you all for your support of the veterans and of Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Uh, my father flew B-52s, I flew C-130s, my, fl my son flies C-17s. So thank you very much. Again, I'm here to ask you for the approval for our budget. Uh, last year, uh, in distributions, uh, we passed out about $344,000. Uh, divided 50% to the uh, county and 50% to Goldsboro and Mount Olive. We also had that additional one-time uh, money of 460000 But looking at that 344, we look at this year coming in uh, right at uh, 436. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more of an increase in distributions. Uh, so needless to say, we're right at our working capital top, so we don't have to put any money in our working capital. So any bit extra that we have at the end of the year will come back to you all. But again, uh, if, if you have any questions on this budget, I think it's, it's a good budget. Anything, any place in here where we don't spend funds, it automatically comes back to you at the end of the year. That's why when we, we budgeted for around uh, 380000 this year, we're coming back at 436. You get all of that. You get, well, county gets 50% of it in Goldsboro, and then I'll get the other 50%. Any questions, any specific questions about our budget? Any questions for Mr. Meyer? Mr. Chair. Mr. Daugherty. Mm -hmm. Just to enlighten me, I'm a new commissioner, you see. Uh, how many locations do you, do you all operate? We have five. We have uh, one in Rosewood, one in uh, Walnut Creek, one in Mount Olive. Uh, and uh, two in Goldsboro over at uh, Landmark Drive and one at the Little River Shopping Center. So we have five locations. Uh, we also have a mixed beverage outlet at our, at our Landmark location, and that does all the mixed beverage sales for the bars and restaurants in, in the county and the, in, in the cities. We have five basic locations. Uh, and just a quick one, I, I'm on the... Uh, the uh, Board of Directors for the North Carolina Association of ABC Boards were going around giving some presentations, but uh, again, for especially for the new new people, I, I don't mind if you don't mind. I'll get, give you my two-minute pitch here. North Carolina, North Carolina is unique in the United States and how this system set up. There, are, there are 33 private states and 17 control states. Of those 17 control states, 16 of them are state-run. The only system in the United States that is locally run and operated is North Carolina. We have 167 a ABC boards. We only have 100 counties, so we have, we have approximately 50 county boards and 116, 117 municipal boards. Uh, and again, being unique, we're set up for the control sale of alcohol. That's why we don't have to make a sale in the, like the, the people in the private states where they're after a profit. We're, at, we're out here in this control system providing the control sale of a product that really needs to be controlled. Uh, that's the control aspect. The other good thing about it is revenue. Last year we, we generated uh, about $795 million in sales across the state. And 40% of that sales came back in some, for to, some form of revenue either to the state or to the local communities. 40%. Think about that. Uh, we generated in Wayne County $2 million in revenue. Uh, we at the county level only got uh, around 355, and uh, the state took $1.7 million, and they take it off the top. Their 30% <coughs> taxes come right off the top before we pay a, a, uh, a salary or before we buy one case of liquor, they pull their 30% off. So they're getting right at 80% of the revenue generated by the local ABC boards and 20% is coming back to the uh, local ABC boards, which that 20% was $55 million last year to the local communities in, in North Carolina. But I'd appreciate you stressing that again, and that is that the, the dollar amounts in Wayne County for last year that went to the state and how much was retained locally? Uh, about 1.7, about $1.7 million went to the state and about 355,000 stayed here. Now, 
We also had a one time, I hate bringing this up because this was a one time they changed the requirements for how much working capital we hold, could hold from four, four month sales down to three months. So we also gave the county, county and the cities 460,000 in addition to that 355,000. So that's, that's what came back locally. And tell, tell them, Mr. Smith or, or Mike, how that was distributed. If you can remember right off last in year, education last year that was the you actually supported our uh, graduation coach success coach program and and the, the the extra money for teachers to buy supplies to buy supplies. every every teacher in one yeah, we a couple hundred thousand dollars remember which that. was extremely Five helpful hundred dollars to every classroom that's right yes. <coughs> well it's just real interesting to hear that uh, you're operating we're you know we're making the investment on the local level uh, but the guys up there in Raleigh are getting 80% of the profit off the top. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I just want to make sure that hopefully Steve will put that in the paper. Well, he has, Steve, <laughs> Steve has been very, Steve's been very good to us before. He has put that in. Uh, three years ago when I was president of the uh, North Carolina ABC Association, Steve had a couple interviews and, and really told it like it is. And we were one of the first ones that brought it out in the paper. Uh, trying to get some 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 public uh, notice of this. One thing is the general public and a lot of our legislatures up in the in Raleigh don't really know how this system operates, right, right. and that's why some of these presentations that the association is doing across the state is to enlighten not only our appointing authority but some of our legislatures and in, and in, in the. I'd like state. to ask the question. Mr. Smith might have to answer this. Would you please tell me again how much money we got last year that was divided between. Goldsboro and Mount Olive. Yes, sir. I can I can tell you that between Goldsboro and Mount Olive was 172,000, and it's based and then then the division the of that 172 is based on profit of those two boards. So Mount Olive Mount Olive got more than I'm 30, sorry. 30, Goldsboro got 30. Goldsboro got Goldsboro got around. Uh, I think I think Mount Olive got about 38,000. 38. Yeah. So uh, that 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 was that was what I was trying to get to. <laughs> Goldsboro, Goldsboro got a larger share based upon the amount of sales that they've made. And in the amount of stores. They have, they the have amount of stores, stores. okay. Yeah. yeah. Because, so, because, because of how you annex out 70, you go out to Walnut Creek and you go out to the Rosewood store there that we got at the shopping center, Goldsboro gets that, they get that, those percentages. Mount Olive's down there by itself. So in other words, and just to go one step further, I, I do remember uh, the the the, instant, uh, the situation where the special allotment was made mm -hmm. to the schools out of that money uh, that went for materials and supplies uh, that's a good thing because I look forward to similar kinds of things being done for teachers in the future. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Kamari. Any other comments? No, it was very informative. Thank you. I would like to um, ask you to. Uh, elaborate a little bit on substance abuse and how the ABC board helps substance abuse in Wayne County. Well, the, we've had a couple of uh, good programs. Uh, we have certain money at the end. It's what's it's called alcohol education rehabilitation money that that the board actually gets to spend. It's not as much as that we're giving in distributions to the, <coughs> the county and city cities. It comes to about fifteen thousand dollars in the last two years. We've invested that most of that we have helped the, the AA building improve some of its facilities, but that's on a small scale. But two years ago, we invested in um, a theater group, group, the North Carolina uh, Children's Theater Group, a little, little group based out of uh, Fremont, and uh, they gave three one act plays to uh, five of the high schools on. Um, underage drinking and some of the, the ill effects of drinking and, and driving. Very well received by the teachers, very well received by the students. Last year we brought Roman Gabriel the third in here, uh, Roman Gabriel's son, and he, he has a program, you can look at it on the internet, sold out, and it's really sold out ministries, but it's sold out, and he's in 13 counties doing the same thing, coming in and breathe, and his, his how he tries to get to the students is using sports, He's a big uh, radio person up in the Boone area, works with uh, Appalachian State, and goes and attends the Super Bowls and the World Series and brings back interviews and comments and, and really some, some good words from some of our, athlete, uh, our athletes 
on why you shouldn't be using drugs and why you shouldn't be doing alcohol in high school. And we did that on a three-day uh, a three-day period this year and touched every one of the we had a presentation to all the seniors in every high school in Wayne County and that's that's our biggest that's our biggest com contribution we funded that uh, for the for the school system Mr. Mark thank you any other questions and I've got one other thing the reason we have the travel the travel policy on there we have y'all's travel policy we took it right out and have and, and you haven't changed we haven't changed this is just something that the Commission requires us to say every time we come and bring our budget that also to approve their travel policy but it hasn't changed and it's your travel policy is our travel policy. thank you mr. mark any other questions for the commissioners thank you very much for the presentation okay thank you we need Keep up the good work good we need uh, consideration of the budget and of the travel policy. I was going to do that. But okay. All right. I was going to ask. I'm getting ahead of you. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. <clears throat> okay. Now, yeah. okay. what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I uh, move that we approve the uh, Wayne County ABC Board 2013-14 budget and their travel policy. Thank you, Mr. Daughtery. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. That is unanimous. <clears throat> Downtown Goldsboro Development Corporation requests for the use of courthouse grounds September the 20th for an annual dinner. Mr. Smith, we have some <coughs> special guests today. Um, I don't know if we have anybody here from DGDC? I don't believe so. I know they had another meeting, so I told them I'd be glad if they couldn't make it. Um, this is just um, a, a technicality, but we always get permission from the board for them to use the grounds. They always set up a very, and, and the commissioners are invited. They set up and have a dinner and a presentation in front of the courthouse on uh, around this time every year, and this is just allowing them to utilize the, the facility. Thank you. What's the pleasure of the board? Make a motion we accept. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Motions on the floor that we allow the annual dinner um, by the Goldsboro Development Corporation. Any discussion? Yes, I'll, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you did say the commissioners are invited to this, right? They're always invited. Okay. Always. And I kind of look, we'll say it's contingent. Behind <laughs> <laughs> It's always a nice dinner. It's always nice. You can bring Scott. That's, that's you can bring good. the baby. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. That is your name. Number five, um, presentation of the county manager's recommendation. Um, again, this is not an action item. It's just a presentation by a county manager, something that uh, we all know uh, has been anticipated. Mr. Smith? Yes, sir. Um, this past weekend, uh, by statute, um, I have the uh, uh, obligation to make sure that the budget itself is uh, given to the board uh, by June 1st, and it was delivered late Friday afternoon, so you do have the budget itself. Uh, today and over the weekend, we were finishing up, uh, making sure, because obviously, uh, between, and I appreciate, I know uh, Janice, uh, is with Janice Rice is here and of course uh, Miss Holt uh, could not be here today because of uh, emergency in her family uh, but the, the credit whenever you put a budget together goes to every single person that works for the county every agency uh, it's no one person it's all of us and it's the board uh, today uh, the uh, my one of the largest um, uh, issues that a county manager has uh, is to put a budget together as budget officer and bring it to you and I would like mr. chairman just to read this uh, this is very brief uh, but chairman Keene, the Board of County Commissioners I hereby submit the recommended Wayne County fiscal year 1314 net budget in the amount of a hundred and twenty million one hundred and twenty seven thousand dollars seven hundred forty dollars as compared to the FY 2012 13 budget of one hundred and twenty one million two eighty eight seven eighty two a reduction of one million one hundred sixty one thousand forty two dollars which lowers the property tax rate of seventy point two five per one hundred dollars evaluation to sixty seven point five zero per hundred dollars evaluation the budget is balanced and prepared in accordance with the local government budget and fiscal control act 
county departments in this office are encouraged by the leadership of the Board of Commissioners and the planning processes that have been put into place to make Wayne County stronger. There are no increases in fees except for landfill tipping fees. The fee is recommended to go from $30 per ton to $31.50 per ton to cover the new electronics program and changes in the overall recycling program. With the uh, leadership of the Board of Commissioners, Wayne County is focusing on continuous improvement and better stewardship of funds and services. This long-term focus has become increasingly more important as the financial situation of our community changes. The county working more diligently this time to provide quality services meeting the needs of its citizens while continuing to lay a foundation for the uh, community to stand on when the economic situation improves. We will continue to monitor the economic situation of our county and report to the board regularly. The county is committed to supporting the community by making strategic investments in services and decisions that contribute to the quality of life that the citizens of Wayne County have come to expect. Wayne County continues to focus on providing citizens with high quality service while keeping property taxes low. Revenue projections remain conservative. At the same time, as directed by the commissioners, the budget includes strategic investments in high priority areas of education, public safety, economic development, and quality of life. I encourage you to explore the budget itself to learn more about these investments and how the county will achieve uh, the Board of Commissioners' goals. I look forward to the budget uh, work sessions over the next couple of weeks whereby the board can further examine details within the budget and the impacts thereof. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, books available in the library. We also will have this online. It's online today, this afternoon. So you can go to WayneGov.com and if someone wants to review it, it's in PDF format so you can take a look at it. There's a viewing copy in our office or at the library location. So. Uh, we would ask people to do that. We start with our work session, detailed work session, this Thursday at 8 a.m. Look forward to that and working with the board and, uh, and also in, in educating everyone and, and you're asking us questions. I think, Mr. Chairman, that the work sessions that we held that a lot of you attended were very helpful and uh, that we were able to, I think, work through some things with departments. Um, and I just look forward to this Thursday. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Yes, sir. Along with that, on Thursday, our meeting starts at 8, and will we have lunch? Do you want lunch at 12 or 1? I think we have planned it. Okay, so we'll we'll go into um, probably 1 o'clock, and then um, it follows in with uh, a change that we had scheduled the following Tuesday, but uh, I put it here uh, and added to the agenda that we move that Tuesday to Monday, the following Monday. Um, do we need a motion on that, or is that just, can we? We would need a motion okay. so we can do a public notice. All right. So that would Although be this coming Monday, I guess that is Monday, June 10th at 8 a.m. in this room. Okay. And then I understand that the following Tuesday will be the commissioner's meeting. At that time, we'll have a public hearing. We'll have a public hearing. And then the... At 9.30. At 9.30. And then the following Tuesday will be the day that we that we've considered. Okay, yes, got sir. it. Okay, we'll um, all those. Um, any what's the pleasure of the board? Yeah, I guess to make a motion we accept, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayo. Motions on the floor that we have our public heat. Mir I'm sorry, our work session moved from um, Tuesday to Monday, from the 11th to the 10th. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, thank you. Six o'clock, oh, that's 20, that's 30, that's 40 minutes from now. So we are in the uh, public comments and it's at six o'clock. So we'll have to wait until six o'clock to have the public comments. So um, while we're waiting, let's go to Board of Commissioners comments. Let's begin to do that. Mr. Bell. Uh, no comment, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Donnery. Mr. Chairman, I um, want to broach a subject that um, I think happened last night. And I think that um, uh, we all should recognize what our purpose is and sometimes pause and think for a moment in regards to what we as board members are here for 
as well as working with other boards. I am excited to see the school board make a bold decision to present to us a recommendation on a short list of obtainable goals in dealing with our schools. And I just, just want to say that I realize it was a long time coming, but it is it has arrived and I'm hoping that we will use our best efforts to set aside any personal feelings and do what needs to be done to improve our children's education here in Wayne County. I realize we all have our districts, we all have our needs and our preconceived notions, but folks, it's time for us to step up to the plate. And I, I just want to say before we begin our budget discussions that I hope we will take this rare opportunity where the school board has reached out and said meet us halfway and I'm hoping that this board will find a way to make this, this program happen. Um, I realize the devil's in the details and I realize there's a lot we are going to have to accomplish in a short period of time. but. It's a unique opportunity, folks. I've been in Wayne County for many, many, many years, and it is a rare opportunity to see the two boards actually have an opportunity to come together and get something done. And I'm hoping this board will step forward and do it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Daughtery. Mr. Mayor? Um, I, I did all my comments earlier. Um, I don't have no comments. <coughs> Mr. Acott. I just again want to apologize for my appearance today. Uh, I've had some health issues. Uh, didn't think I was going to be here today, but I'm, I'm here. And you just got to accept me like I am. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Pate. A couple of brief things. Um, one, I, too, I attended the Memorial Day presentation at Wayne Community College. I won't go over all of it because it's already been said. But if you um, had attended and you weren't affected by what you saw there, then I don't know. I just made me proud to be American. It really did. Those guys did a great job, and I, I appreciate it. Um, secondly, I want to talk about the Ag Center again. It's not going you know, to forget about that. I um, actually talked with um, Mr. Steve, Steve Allen this week and you might be able to help me out with this because I know you got an email but the process of um, revising our um, booklet vision impact statement whatever it's called is 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 moving on he told me that he's got probably better than 60 percent of the work done and, and should be able to deliver that at, to us sometime early July is that correct yes. mm -hmm. and um, on top of that you know we've been working on a video together with that and Jeremy over at WCDA put it together and he did an excellent job. Uh, we are asked to do a couple of small things to it, nothing major, because he did a very good job. So, um, but very soon I'll be bringing it to this board and I'm going to be, you know, bring it out to the stakeholders in the agribusiness community. So we need to get moving on this. Can you elaborate on? Because I don't, I didn't get a copy of the email. He did say that he shared it with you. Yeah. Or if you find it, or you can just remember off the top. Yeah, of your head. I was trying to pull some of it up right. Because I know you don't get many emails. <laughs> I could say we only get four or five hundred a day. So let's look. No, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I meant to say something to you earlier, but we were yeah, it's tied all right. up. It's all right. Um, While he's doing that, you know, again, the, the importance of agriculture to this county is paramount, and. Um, this is something that our our farmers have been asking for for years. And um, of course we're looking again at a Cherry Hospital Research Farm because this is gonna be a research facility is what we're looking for it to be. Because it'll bring additional jobs to Wayne County and I'm all about that. That's what I did for 32 years. And I want to see more jobs brought to this county and I think that it will be. He told me that he talked to most of the partners who um, this was a old study and things kind of fell apart when the economy went south and it didn't happen. Yep. So things have changed and we're trying to bring this back to Wayne County. 
And so he's been back, talked to a lot of the same people who were interested in being part of this previously, and has. So I did well enough to get you there. Yeah, you did. You did good. I was I, sorry there, when I pull up Steve. It was Steve and Alan. I said anyway. Um, part of when they sent this to me, he said that the study was going well. That um, Seth's now, Courtney, I just moved on me. Oh, jeez. Back up. You have to love technology. My server just went crazy for some reason. Or maybe I covered it well enough. Yeah, he, you know, basically, <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, he said it would be July. He's done most. I think there was um, the CEFs, they had some problems in getting the interview yeah. set up. So there's a couple of those. Once he get those, he'll finish up the work at the end of June. And by the first or second, we should have a preliminary kind of a draft mm -hmm. with the committee go over that first. And then by the end of July, bring something back to the full board. Right, that's what he told me. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think you're on schedule. In fact, it's happened a little quicker than we thought, which yeah. is great. But it helped that he did this a few years ago. So that, that's did. what saved us a lot of money. And I appreciate it. It's yeah. cooperation. He's very good. He's working in Easy to talk to. County, Union County. They're doing a lot of these same studies. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, Steve is doing a great job. And anyway, and Kevin's working with them, setting these things up. They can get this other interview. I think we're good. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Pate. Mr. Camardi. Uh, yes, sir. I would uh, just like to <coughs> post the Darty for recognizing the fact that um, there's a lot need to be done for the school system and all the other entities throughout the county. And as a former educator, maybe still an educator, I applaud <laughs> that. Uh, and my interest of course does not have a district flavor today. My interest has a uh, people flavor today. As, and I say that because reading the news August about 10 days ago, they had a list of things in the newspaper that the legislature has said they were or were not going to do in Raleigh. The last one on the page said that they were not going to give the state employees or teachers any kind of raise. I haven't had the privilege of being able to go through the document that was sent to us Friday, and I may not be able to interpret or find it in there if I had had a chance, but I'll ask the questions when it comes time. But this is my question. I put this to this board and to the county in general, specifically what's going to be done for the teachers and county employees and state employees who are working in the field and doing the job when Rada says they're not going to give them a raise, they're not going to look at that. My question rises, what, what, what can we do about it? That's what I want every citizen to reflect on. What will we do about it? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kumarni. Mr. Bale. Mr. Chairman, I had hadn't planned to say anything, but something kind of tweaked my interest here. I keep hearing some of the new commissioners make comments as though the previous board didn't do anything. I would suggest that you get with Mr. Smith, get a record of the thing that we did for the schools for the past 10 years before you make comments that this is all new and we're just beginning to work with the school board. We got two brand new schools that are just being completed right now that we just funded. We build gyms, we put air conditioning, we put roofs, we give the teachers money to buy materials and all this kind of stuff. So I think it's unfair for any commissioner to sit here and act like this is just beginning. I don't like that. I've been here for 12, 13 years, and we have worked hard with the school board and the school system. And it just didn't start since December. Okay? Thank you, Mr. Bell. My comments come from uh, being sitting uh, at this commission for six, this is my sixth, fifth year and fifth budget. And um, I can assure you as, as a commissioner to the other commissioners that uh, everything that we've talked about today has been or is or will be in that book down at the corner that Mr. Bell has in front of his seat. And that's the budget book. And as um, you go home and, and go through these line items and bring that book back with you um, Thursday, you will 
you will have an opportunity to start from page one and we will take as much time as necessary and certainly we wish the public to be here now the public will not be able to come in and present themselves on the, at the podium and say anything because this is a commissioner's work session this is when the commissioners sit down with this book line item by line item department by department and understand from the county manager how monies are coming into this county and what monies may not come into this county based on the information that he has shared with the other county managers all over the state and keeping up with the bills that are coming out of Raleigh but there is a net this year that you've recognized in his message that he's using the net because we are unsure of what may come out of the General Assembly but we can't wait on them we we are sure that the citizens of Wayne County pay taxes and we know what that tax rate is we're also sure that one in four people are in poverty we're also sure that we have a literacy problem we also are sure that the unemployment rate is higher than it was four or five years ago we're sure of that in Wayne County and your county manager is absolutely sure of that his message today came as a, a message that was well thought through and he asked not to share that message until his first day this first day of the commissioners meeting of this month he presented the budget as statute re requires by the first and he did that but he was so concerned about all that the seven commissioners want for this county and he hears from each one of us and then as chairman it, it becomes my duty to listen to each one of you and to listen to the county manager and to council to make sure that what we say and do is all legal but to make sure that the manager understands he wants to understand what the commissioners want we are seven as you've heard me say over and over we're on a boat together and it's 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 team building it's going out on a trip and whatever happens happens but we get back to the port safely all seven of us so you as you went to the general assembly meeting i'm glad we all had a chance to go because that's how it is that's just the way you see it done and that's the way we do it here but all of us i can say for this has the, the for what is best of the people of wayne county and when we said and we set the rate or we have to s approve the budget then we have to understand all of the all of the principles of the county all of the dynamics all of the makeup there's not one of us in here that doesn't want our children educated more so than what the kids were learning last year we want to set a greater bar like jd evans said set the next level and we always are trying to set a higher bar in this county and i and i um i know that our number one priority um, is creating jobs that's our number one priority because the only way to get out of poverty is to create jobs but those jobs require educated people so our priority is to educate those kids and that's what we do but we have to keep them safe and that we have three gentlemen back here the sheriff and his deputies that have been here their job is to make sure the kids are safe but it takes money we, we, we have to make sure that it takes money and where is that money coming from <coughs> So I can assure you this coming Thursday, four hours plus, please be here, sit out amongst us, listen to us, and you'll find out a lot about your commissioners. You'll find out a lot about the districts they represent because that's who elects, that's the process of Wayne County. You'll find out a lot about the manager and how he sees it going for the next year, two years, and three years, four years. But you'll see a vision laid out before you because this commission that's what we promised transparency we want you to know how we are working for the people of Wayne County for you the taxpayer and then we've not had enough Thursday because we know in that book you deserve greater than just four or five hours you deserve another day and guess what you deserve more than that if that's what it takes but we're going to do all we can so we're going to come back the following Monday and then we're going to have a public hearing the following Tuesday whatever it takes but this year we're going to start this trip where the people and the citizens 
of this county know exactly where they are to start this journey with us. That's my comments. We've got about 25 minutes before the, um, the, the public comment section. We can't deter from that. That is rule. There may be some that want to come and, and can't get here until they get off of work at 5 or 5.30, and they may be on their way. That's why we're having this meeting at one meeting at night during the month and the other one during the day, in the morning. So at 6 o'clock, we have 25 minutes. So with that, um, I will call a recess uh, for 25 minutes, and please be back about five, well, 20 minutes and be back at 5 till 6 so we can have our public comment section. Thank you. I mean, we purchased many a car, which includes challenges and Tahoes, whatever the county citizens may see drive, being driven. And keep in mind, you know, that was no cost to the taxpayer, along with other equipment recently, guns and other, other things. And also, again, which I had explained recently, uh, the helicopter, which I'm about tired of explaining. I explained to one person on a Facebook thing, you know, well, how much did it cost to find that marijuana? that we flew and I said well you didn't pay me you know, the fuel, the insurance, the hangar, the helicopter itself and the equipment didn't cost the county taxpayer anything. The only thing was was the salary of that deputy sheriff's uh, as well as the, the rest of the deputies flying. So we put that in perspective there. But I did want to say just one thing I realized that y'all took an oath to be good stewards of this county and you made some promise, you know, got promises to help the taxpaying citizens. And I understand that. But I also realize that I made a promise to the citizens too that uh, I took oath that I would protect and preserve them, uh, serve them, and provide adequate protection. So during this budget process, I know we'll be talking and going through some things. And as the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger said, I'll be back. I'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Good evening, uh, Good evening. Commissioner, Chairman, Commissioners, and other elected officials. My name is Harry Hill. I live at 151 Carb Cola Lane in Dudley. And my phone number is 919-252-7501. And I uh, have lived here in Wayne County for quite a while. But uh, right now, recently, my house has been broken into twice two times this year and each time they got two large screen TVs it's getting so bad now I have to go to the hospital if I want to watch TV uh, I, I don't know what the deal is but I know that the time I think the time is a factor because when the house is broken into you and you call the police it takes a while to get out there because there's no substation or nothing close by it just takes them a while and so I guess the thieves know this as well. And you think about the thieves out where I live, breaking into a house, is a, a big screen TV is not easy to carry, but you know, one person could probably carry one. But like I said, each time they've gotten two from my house. And it's getting real bad out there. Uh, I checked with some of my neighbors, and the neighbors are having the same problem. I, had a, I thought I had lost a lot when I lost about two thousand dollars worth of TV. I got one neighbor that had a three thousand dollar TV. She didn't know she only had it for uh, ten days, and it got stolen. So it's real bad. We we need uh, police protection. We need police protection. And uh, I think we got we got a good sheriff. We just don't have enough maybe enough policemen to go out, you know, to do this job. Uh, so if y'all will consider, please consider giving him more in the budget or something because like I said it's getting mighty expensive thank you very much thank you Mr. Hill <coughs> Tom Drew PO Box 587 Goldsboro 27533 little update end of the online 
form being advanced right now to advance education democracy to advance education and suicide prevention a special letter series welcoming guest educators to voice their opinions questions suggestions about realities affecting their ability to educate in Wayne County especially at Wayne Community College uh, we should reflect first on News Argus editorial unsigned May 28th we all probably we all probably have legitimate excuses for not attending the Memorial Day ceremony at Wayne Community College Monday perhaps plans perhaps work perhaps pre-planned when we say we we mean we but I say we is not the I didn't probably have legitimate excuses I had one banned arbitrarily capriciously indefinitely without benefit of appeal from being on the property also when securing my last permit to hold the signs I've been holding up here I sought one for every Monday for the rest of the year to do justice to these matters that the moral day should reflect one permit was there, the one for the rest of the year was not available. I did not have time to find out why, but legitimate excuses for not being there. Uh, I was sensing from a Crime Stoppers telephone talent show. The real crime of that Crime Stoppers was I did get to listen to the CD of what it did produce. All music was the blues. That's about love gone sad, bad, or never had. I don't sing the blues, I sing the greens. <laughs> that don't absolve or resolve the problems of the blues. May is Mental Health Month, beginning month, uh, workshop by Mental Health Association of Wayne County. Questionnaire censored. Is it correct there's neither suicide prevention specialist or training for one in North Carolina? Advanced to East Point and Mental Health Association of Wayne County, those realities, and also find, seeking from them, is that statement correct? No known response from them. The 27th uh, guest educator from Ohio, a psychologist, Frederick J. Perez, came to the library, care of East Point, uh, sought to address with him proactively before he got here and let him know the conditions affecting his ability to educate. Several days prior, emailing the best email address I had. As he went out the door, I did ask him a question. I asked him, does he know, or does he know someone who knows, where one would get the finest education in suicide prevention in the world, on earth? He said he did not know. Then he turned the table on me and said, do you know? I didn't answer his question then. But before the day was out, I had an email to him that there is an answer to that question. I don't have that to y'all yet. That'll be a public record. Hopefully the next day or so that'll be there as well. You've already got my communications to him, both you and the school board, along with everyone else. Science of education. Last night as I addressed, the answer's only raised the question. Now I did advance a form on the top ten questions to advance education that we may know justice, mercy, prosperity, peace, long loves, and long lives. The question advanced to the school board last night is the Wayne County Public Schools teaching the law of all laws, the law of cause and effect. And if so, why, if not why? And I welcome from this board the answer to that question, a little bit informal. I hope to have it more formal in writing, the transcripts of last night's presentation within a week or so. Thank you, Mr. Drew. Any other comments? If not, the public comment session is over. Any other comments from the commissioners? If not, the meeting stands adjourned. Do I have a motion that we adjourn? I so move. Thank you. <laughs>